How's it going guys? James here from Butler Farms and it's good to be back with you today. It is Columbus Day. So we're off of school and um, get, trying to get some things done here around the house and I just I wish I could fully describe how beautiful this day is. It's just a picture perfect day. Um, gonna get in the mid to high 70s. Good cool breeze blowing through here. Guys, falls here. Wonderful time of year. Love it. Um, makes it fun to get back outside again and get some work done. But I'm coming to you today, um, still trying to kind of reprogram and rethink after the storms that we had and the cleanup that we had. And yes, I'm still working on cleanup. Going to be working on it a little bit today as well. And what I need from you is some help. I need you to uh, see if you can give me some advice about uh, what you would do. Now, I've shown you in um, some of the former videos uh, where my fruit trees are. We're big into blueberries here and we're going to continue to do that but during the storm we had some opportunities i showed you some with the new land that we've uh had cleared it's not new land it's just reclaimed land um i, I can remember when it was open like that before but we're going to try very hard to keep it open and make it productive now one thing that i do want to change here is you can see behind me these gigantic holly bushes now these holly bushes have been around as long as i've been up here uh on my this is my wife's home place and guys i have to come out here every winter and trim these things up and try to get them under control and you can see they're completely out of control you can see how high they get there and i'm just going to be honest with you they they do provide a little bit of habitat for birds and things like that but as far as them being productive in any way for us the only thing that they produce is blood when i drive by them on the lawnmower uh, and try to cut too close to them and no they got to go and this is all brought about by something i'll show you down here on the edge of the driveway so we've got room here on the edge of the driveway you can see the pecan trees behind us and believe it or not uh, after several years of not getting a a good pecan at all i picked up a couple of grocery bags full of them uh, when i was cleaning up branches out here still from the storm uh, the other day so i don't know what's going on that hasn't happened in a lot of years but back to the point at hand so these holly bushes have got to go um, right now they you can see it's in the morning they get very little morning light but uh, west is right over there and so they will get uh, some afternoon sun so I don't know I've been kind of thinking about what I could put here I definitely I don't want to put like blueberry bushes down through here I'd like more of a tree uh you know these pecan trees are, are pretty tall something a little bit shorter and what i've been looking at is hazelnuts um i found a hazelnut tree that's supposed to be able to grow very well in our area they are pretty expensive um so i want to make sure that that's something i really want to do as far as nut trees here on the property like i said these pecan trees have haven't produced a um, uh, an eating pecan in years and they have this year but we'll see how long that lasts other than that um we don't have any nut bearing trees here so i'm thinking about hazelnuts um, in these two spots you have to have two of those um, to be able to um, uh, get anything off of them uh, they have to have more than one so i would at least have to have two um, so i don't know give me your thoughts on that like i said we got very little morning sun gonna have a good bit of afternoon sun um, it's right here on the edge of the driveway where it's open and can expand and I can kind of keep it uh, cut back But the hazelnut trees that I've been researching they don't get very tall um, They're more of a mid-story kind of thing. I don't know. Give me your advice on that. That's that's why I'm making this video I need your advice. I need remember we live in 8a zone 8a so you know um, Make sure that it's something we can use here. I'm walking out in the Sun as you can tell now this behind me right here is uh, One of two gardenia bushes now these were planted by my wife's great-grandfather years and years ago and They are special to her but at the same time I, It's gonna be really hard to see in this glare See what's happened here now. This is one that was pretty much toward the end of its life anyway um, it has uh, it wasn't blooming much wasn't uh, coming out much wasn't leafing out much uh, every year and this humongous tree that you've seen us clean up over here fell well actually that one right there we've had so many uh, fell directly through this thing and has broken almost all of it down I just don't think it's worth saving. I could trim it back and see if it would pop back out next year, but 
Uh, we've still got uh, a healthy gardenia bush that also from her great grandfather that does come out every year so i will keep that one but this is one that i'm also going to get rid of uh this winter uh, when i can get in there and get it cut down and um so another opportunity right here on the driveway and um i don't know i don't know that i need three hazelnut trees so what would you think you know uh you know it's uh it's kind of a blank slate you hate to see a storm come through like that and you hate to see the damage done and the amount of work that we've had to do to uh get this back under control and we're still not through i'm getting ready to go show you another place that you've seen before that i'm as soon as i put this camera down i've got a day's worth of work at least down there but um i am asking for your advice guys and i need you to help me um would like some nut bearing trees but if it's fruit trees that's fine i just want them to be productive um i'm all about beauty and i'm all about um you know making things look nice but at the same time i want them to be productive um so give me your advice again we're in 8a one other thing before i leave this part of the property is where these trees are you can see we keep cutting this down this was a barrier wall that i've got to get cleaned up that those trees crushed uh when they fell um, we've already got plans to put that back up but in a different way but as you can see on the front of my house over here we are getting full morning sun and it heats that house up big time because you can see the size of those windows in the front um, it was a beautiful spot um, had a big huge uh, tree uh, bigger than that one actually that luckily during the storm it fell away from the house but it's left a blank slate there now um, I'm looking for something for shade something that will kind of block some of that morning sun uh, that eventually we would be able to see under um, you know putting another oak tree in there probably isn't the thing i'm already almost 50 years old so i would like to see it produce some shade sometime in my lifetime but uh you know it can be a fruit tree too but it can be something taller than uh like a hazelnut or something that i want on the driveway but it can be something taller here uh if any of you have any suggestions that would uh, cast some shade up on the front of the house um, to give us some relief there but we definitely need something you can see all this um, cleanup work and tractor work has absolutely destroyed our yard um, grass wise so this next spring we're going to have to get busy replanting so that it doesn't wash away too terribly bad it's going to wash some this winter but we, we're prepared for that and um hopefully we, it won't be too too bad and next spring we'll try to get this back under grass at least right here in the front yard now i'm going to take you down um you can see we've been repiling the um the uh burn pile again it's uh um, this will be the third time that that we've had a burn pile down there just from the sheer amount of stuff we're picking up i'm gonna take you back down to the edge of the woods where we've reclaimed some of that land and uh i want your advice there too so give me just a minute and i'll be right back with you all right guys i'm back here with you and um i apologize for the the glares i don't i can't seem to find anywhere where it's gonna uh the, the sun is just in and out like i said it's a beautiful day out here and i'm i am absolutely not complaining but as far as the camera goes, it is causing all kind of havoc. I'm back over here in the area where uh, this was cleared out. Um, and um, I've shown this to you in another video. You can see the burn pile uh, down there. And you can see the garden area. Now the garden area is going to be extended on out. That's probably, I hope my, my plan is to double it in size. That's for another video another time. But uh, here we are on the cleared area, and again, sorry for the glare. Now up here, like I told you, I'm gonna keep this kind of open. Uh, I, I really want, this This is actually some really good soil. I've already dug around in it, and it looks really good. Uh, it's not really compacted, uh, it's kind of loose, so I'm actually gonna try to grow potatoes and sweet potatoes right here. You can see the amount of sun this gets. Uh, it is still in the morning, but it's getting on up in the morning. Uh, so it gets it gets sun first thing in the morning east is directly behind me and uh, It's this will actually keep sun on it uh, uh, Till afternoon when it gets a little bit of break when it goes behind those trees now um, So that's my plans for that. I've always wanted to grow potatoes and have a spot for it but as you can see what I'm dealing with with uh, and you still it's hard to tell 
how steep this actually is uh, right here. Just not a lot of place for uh, garden that, except for that flat place up there. And I may end up putting potatoes and stuff up there, but I thought I might as well try it here. Now where I need your help is this area down through here. You can see that it's cleared back well into the tree, so it's gonna be, um, it, it, it will never be in full sun, but it'll never be in full shade either. So you can see even with these big trees uh, up above it, that it gets plenty of sun, uh, partial sun in there. And um, so that's a, that's a good thing. Remember we're, we are in zone 8A. So, yep, this is me asking you again, what do you think I ought to put in here, guys? Y'all know me by now, I just cannot let that sit there bare like that. I've got enough grass to cut out here uh, that isn't really producing anything right at the moment. Uh, one day I, I hope to run meat chickens uh, down uh, through here, but as, as far as it producing anything right at the moment, all it's producing is a, a lawnmower bill and, and having to buy gas to cut it. So while I've got this spot and I've got it cleared out, you can see we got some things coming on up in here. That's part of my plan today is to try to get some of this cleaned up where I can get it cut and keep it knocked down. But what is your suggestions, guys? That's, uh, I I'm, uh, really would like to know uh, those of you that uh, are in the same zone as I am or those of you that have just studied up on this stuff. I think I've got some ideas. Uh, especially um, out in this area you know I'm, I'm a blueberry guy um, and I've got plenty of them I have to move them every year from my dad's and my house um, and have to find somewhere to put them but there is a lot of room also for some mid-level type fruit trees or nut trees in here um, that are going to grow well in here because as you can see they get plenty of dappled partial light in here so uh, it's going to be a, a great area, I think, and I'm really excited about uh, getting started over here. Um, but now it's time for me to get to work. I know it doesn't look like it, but where they cleared out and where they hauled all that stuff to the burn pile um, after the storm. Guys, I can't even cut my yard out there. I, I ran lawnmower through there, and uh, I thought it was going to tear it all to pieces before I could shut the blades off. Uh, there's so much scrap and so much wood. So... I'm down to getting that wheelbarrow right there. That's where I'm headed right now is to grab it and to uh, get started hauling loads um, that I'm going to put over here at the edge of the woods. And you also know me, it's gonna be turned into a compost pile. So I'll be starting another one right there and trying to get it heated up and piled up for the winter and uh, have some compost right here beside where I'm gonna put my potatoes. So, you know, uh, as Billy says at Permapastures Farm, the problem is the solution. Um, that's kind of what we do with permaculture. Uh, you you take what you have and, and, and make hay with it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, make compost out of all this beautiful mulch that they left behind that is in the way from cleaning up and from planting and uh, it'll turn into something useful. But I'm gonna leave it right there for today. Uh, guys, I, I appreciate you being with me and follow me along on this journey and um, I'll bring you an update as quick as I can. Guys, just keep praying for those folks in the Carolinas. Keep praying for those folks in, in Florida. They need it. Um, They're facing a long uphill battle. And uh, just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Share it with a friend. Tell them what we're all about. Let them, let them see for themselves. And uh, if you don't mind, just give me a thumbs up down there and invite everybody that you can. Let's keep growing and let's keep reaching out to folks out there that want to grow their own food too and live a more sustainable uh, lifestyle. So until next time, God bless you. This is James from Butler Farms and we'll be seeing you.